Hey there, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and uh, right now I wanted to show you a really quick video on how to convert your sagging zone defensive zone coverage into a breakout. So let's go ahead, we'll pull up the rink here and uh, if you remember from our previous video, sagging zone is the next progression, a little bit more complex version of the box plus one and uh, it's a little bit more aggressive. So hopefully you're going to cause more turnovers with this and uh, be able to get the puck back and initiate your breakout. So here's what we've got. Uh, this is our basic sagging zone coverage. And uh, you'll notice we've got a right defenseman hard on the puck. Uh, centerman is supporting that defenseman. Uh, we start him off at the near post. And then from there, he can read and react. And uh, his basic job is to support that defenseman. Uh, then we've got our left defenseman on the rear post or weak side post. And he's the one, uh, basically, he goes there as his position set up, and then he's got his head on a swivel, looking for anybody who may be trying to sneak in on the back door. Uh, we've got our strong side winger uh, covering the point, and our weak side winger is the sag man. And uh, we call him the sag man because he sags low, down into the low slot, and he's basically an emergency man. So if, 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 uh, if any disaster happens, He's, uh, he's going to help clear guys out from the front of the net. He's also going to watch for this defenseman to sneak in behind. He's kind of, uh, kind of an emergency man, sag man. That's what we call him. So that's our basic setup. And uh, for this demonstration, let's just assume that uh, our right defenseman uh, went in, read the play. The other player, maybe the other player was bobbling the puck a little bit. So the right defenseman uh, went in, laid a good hit on him, knocked that player down, and now our right defenseman has come up with the puck. Okay. So in our other example, we had the centerman swing in and pick up the puck and the centerman initiated the breakout. That can happen as well, um, just depending on the game situation. So sometimes different things happen at different times. So for this particular uh, demonstration, we're just going to assume that the right defenseman has the puck and he's going to initiate the breakout. Now I mentioned it in our other video, but I want to mention it again. If you haven't watched our video on initiating a hockey breakout, uh, make sure you watch that. There are a few tactics and a few good things that... Uh, that we talk about in that video that really kind of lay a good groundwork for um, you know for when you start putting down your X's and O's and uh, talking about positioning. So go watch that initiating hockey breakout video. I'll put a link to it with this one and uh, and then uh, come back and finish watching this one. So uh, right defenseman gets the puck. He's going to immediately start skating towards the quiet zone. That's where all of our breakouts initiate from. Now from there he'll read the pressure. Uh, depending on where the pressure is, he may skate it all the way around the the back of the net and break out from the weak side or he may misdirect just depends on the situation so let's uh, let's assume on this one that as soon as that turnover happened this guy fell down in the corner um, let's say that this winger decided to put some pressure on this defenseman and he's coming down from an angle uh, onto this guy's inside shoulder okay so as we learned in the initiating the breakout video if the pressure is on your inside shoulder then it's a good play to misdirect so the defenseman will misdirect and now he can initiate the breakout from, uh, you know, from that positioning there. Now, here's what's happening with the other players as they see this happening. Okay, so our right winger, let's start with him. Our right winger sees that the turnover happened. Um, he was actually, he was about here, maybe up a little bit higher. As he sees that the turnover happens, here's what he's going to do. And this is one scenario where I actually really like to do the, the top-down breakout. Um, as opposed to the bottom up. So a lot of coaches, they like their winger to come down, make a nice low swoop, and then come back up the sideboards. Um, that can work, depending on the situation, but I found that doing it this way, especially from a strong side breakout, leaves you very open to a vulnerable, or leaves you very vulnerable and open to a pinch if this defenseman reads the play properly, which at higher levels of play, they often do. Um, so this leaves you open for a pinch. That guy can get a really good head of steam going, and as soon as you touch the puck, um, you're getting hit. Uh, so what I actually like to do, and this has worked really well for me, uh, again, I always give a little disclaimer, different teams work well with different, uh, different formations, so this may or may not work for you, but I like to do the top down. So I like to have this guy, he basically, he's already in his position covering that defenseman. As he sees the turnover start to happen, um, he's going to be ready. And as he sees his defenseman make that misdirection and open up to give a pass, he's going to just take, you know, three or four steps in, and uh, that basically just distances himself a little bit from that defenseman um, so that he has enough room to receive the pass. And uh, also, it, it, it's a lot harder to pinch when you're chasing the guy from behind than if you can see the whole play opening up and uh, you get a good head of steam going. So this kind of eliminates the pinch uh, coming from the top down. So he's going to open up. That's going to be your board side option. And then the centerman, as this play is developing, the centerman is going to be shadowing. So the centerman's always supporting the strong side uh, defenseman, the puck 
he's supporting the puck carrying defenseman. So as he sees the turnover happening, the centerman is going to come out and he's going to skate this way. Okay. So if the play develops where the defenseman continues on behind the net, the centerman just continues shadowing along the front side of the net, but slightly behind that defenseman. That's how the timing is going to work out with uh, this particular breakout. Um, but in this case, our defenseman misdirected. So the centerman is going to be turning, shadowing, and then as he sees the misdirection happening, and I'm going to overlap, overlap a few of these lines here, but that's okay. As he sees the misdirection happen, he misdirects two towards the defenseman, so he's never taken his eye off his defenseman. And, uh, and then he's going to open up and provide a middle side or a middle option for that breakout. So this is what it'll look like. As he sees the misdirection happening, he misdirects two. Again, slightly behind the play so that he can always see the defenseman's numbers. That's where the timing's going to work out. And then he can open up into a middle option. So I know this looks like a lot of squigglies, a lot of overlapping lines, but it's not that complex. Basically, the winger provides a board side option. Centerman shadows and then provides a middle option after the defenseman determines which way it's going to go. So everything de everything depends on which, which way the defenseman goes and what he does with the puck. So from here, in this example, you have a board side breakout and a middle breakout option. And that's where the play can uh, progress to. Now, depending on how, how it works out, like I said, watch the initiating breakout video, but if the defenseman, maybe the defenseman skates it from one side of the ice to the other, that's okay. Then this winger comes up, swoops down, and he's the board side option. Sediment just shadows and provides a middle side, uh, middle support option for that middle breakout. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that a breakout can occur from this setup. Uh, I wanted to talk about the weak side winger. Weak side winger um, watches the play develop and he needs to read, anticipate, and react, but he has to do it correctly. Um, it's really important that he doesn't blow out of the zone too early, but um, basically as he sees that the play is developing and he sees that it's, it's a definite, uh, definite thing that our, our team is going to get the puck and get a good breakout, then he is going to explode out of the zone and cut across the ice for a breakaway option. And uh, we talk a little bit a little bit more about cutting through the lanes in our video about lanes. Um, it's a short one, so make sure you go check that out. And so basically what can happen is it can go, uh, you know, maybe goes winger to one touch pass the centerman and then a little one touch pass up to the breakaway man, which can work or it can go straight to the centerman and then up to the breakaway man. But what I like to see happen, let me get rid of some of these lines just so it's not too complex. Uh, what I like to see happen is after the centerman gets the puck, I like to see him take his first few initial steps wide. And the reason why is that that makes the defenseman have to back up. Either back up or play him, right? And either way, we like that. We like to make defensemen have to make decisions. So start wide. Um, the winger will swoop in behind you as you pass him. So that's going to turn into your backside support there. And then, uh, you know, after you've drawn wide, then you can, once you see what the defenseman do, does, then you can either hit the breakaway man or continue up ice or whatever, uh, whatever play presents itself. So that is converting your uh, sagging zone coverage into a breakout. Now, we also talked a little bit about the sagging zone, um, sagging zone arrow, which is just a little bit more aggressive version of the sagging zone. And um, when you're converting that into a breakout, it's basically the same thing. The positions are almost identical. Uh, they're just a little bit more spread out, and uh, you'll probably have more turnovers by doing it that way. But um, the, th the, the breakout in and of itself is still the same. So sagging zone and sagging zone arrow will have a, a very similar breakout transition. And uh, that's how you do it.